All right, so welcome to Black Men and Nutrition. My name is Robin, Certified Nutrition Specialist. And this is a topic that needs to happen. While you're listening, you'll, you'll hear from a panel of Black men sharing their nutrition story. And our intention for this is to inspire Black men and those that love you. We want you just to listen, to have an open mind of what information that we're going to share with you. I will ask you at the end to take action, but I promise you that the action will be simple. If I, if I promise you that, if I'm not saying that you have to overhaul everything that you do right now today, will you keep an open mind and open ear? My dad, was 68 years old when he passed away of everything and everything being diabetes, kidney disease, heart disease, everything that black men, black people actually, but black men have the blood sugar, all of those things. And all of those things are mostly lifestyle related, which means that we can or cannot do things, right? We can shift our lifestyle in order to mitigate some of those challenges. And I wanna say this from my heart, because what I know, and I hear this from a lot of women, is that I can't get my man to listen or do these things, or I don't, he won't change and all of that. So I'm talking to y'all black men, let me get in the camera, I'm talking to y'all. When you guys don't uh, behave, can I say that? It stresses us out. When my dad passed away, because he didn't want to change. It was me that had to do all of these things for him. It was, it was me. So when you don't, you're, 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 you have your family that's worried, your wives, your mothers, your sisters were worried. And so if you don't want to change for you, change for the fact, or just shift, shift, not say change, just take a shift and do some things a little bit different to, to alleviate some of our stress and some of your own too, because when you have some of these challenges, y'all don't seem to like them either. So with that being said, I'm gonna introduce you to our panel and then I'll share with you a little, I'll come back and talk a little bit more about the nutrition, but keep your ears open. I'm going to ask you to take action and we hope that you're inspired. So tonight I'm gonna to bring up Otto and each of them are just going to introduce themselves really briefly before I started to ask them a few questions and they can share their nutrition journey. So Otto, where yes. are you? I'm right share. here. Where, what's your name? <laughs> Who are you? Where are you from? My name is Otto Tucker. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm Otto Tucker and I live in uh, beautiful Sun City, Arizona. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. I retired uh, 25 years of service from law enforcement. And so now I'm here enjoying, enjoying the sun. Enjoying the sun, I heard that. All right, and then Johnny, where are you Johnny? Right here. Okay. Okay, so greetings everyone. I'm Johnny Grandison. Uh, I'm an engineer by degree and serving as a project manager with the um, federal government for over 24 years. I've been helping people with their nutritional needs for about 16 years now, and I live in Chesapeake, Virginia with my beautiful wife, Beverly. Awesome, awesome. Edward, unmute, unmute. Gotta unmute, gotta unmute. There you are. There you go. Awesome. Edward. Edward is from Houston, Texas. Okay. I actually work with the world's biggest beverage manufacturer as a day job. Okay. Production uh, technician. I'm also a bookkeeper by profession. I have a home-based bookkeeping company that I've been doing for the last 10 years. Okay. I'm a dad, I'm a grandpa, three grown children, 33, 28, and 30. Awesome. My granddaughter, 10. And very, very traditionalist. One thing that pops out in me is I'm very, very passionate with health. And where, where are you originally from? You, you live in Houston, but where are you originally from? I'm in Houston, Texas, originally from a little country, lock, 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 uh, how can I say, landlocked country, yes, Zambia, okay. in Africa. Zambia, perfect, perfect, thank <laughs> you. Awesome, we'll come back and see you. And then Raphael? 
Hi guys, I am from Redlands, California, or I live currently in Redlands, California, from LA. I'm currently in law enforcement. I've been in that for over a decade. Um, at the same time, I, uh, my passion, I train athletes from aspiring to professional athletes, and I've been doing that for 15 years now. I am a husband and a father of two, a beautiful boy and girl, four and two. So. Awesome. So I'm actually going to come back to you in just a second. So as we talk about health, and as I mentioned to you that um, what I know being a nutritionist is that more times than not, people shift what they're doing because something happened. There's some catalyst that made them start to pay attention. And for myself, I was in my 20s. I'm in my late 40s now when I was pre-diabetic and I was really knocking on diabetes door. And that's what made me pay attention because I really thought if, if food was available, you should eat it. Like if they sold it in the store, then it must be okay. And I didn't realize that that wasn't necessarily so. And then food tastes good. So I'm like, it tastes good. So it has to be good for me. So that was my aha shift. And so Raphael, was there a something that occurred that made you start to pay attention to your health or were you always health conscious? Um, real briefly, uh, I'm a D1 athlete, track and field athlete. So I've never really had an issue or never had to worry. So I thought about my nutrition um, mm -hmm. because I could always burn it off. No worries. Then I got into coaching again, no worries. I mean, I'm fit. You know, that's how I always perceived myself until okay. 2019, December. Um, I went to go get some blood work. I'm 30, 34 at the time or 33 at the time. Um, and sure enough, I got my blood work back and my panels came back and I was pre-diabetic. Complete shock to me, complete shock mm -hmm. um, for me. Um, it was a humbling experience for me. Um, blew my mind, but it was that December 19, December 2019, that's when everything started to shift, where I had to stop just worrying about physical aspect, but internal and my nutrition, so. Aha, uh -huh. you said something powerful. A lot, of, a lot of people think that, okay, I'm doing the exercise, I can eat whatever, right? That's the mindset. So you said something so powerful. I appreciate that. We're gonna come back and we're gonna uncover that because nutrition is, is, is the thing, y'all. <laughs> Food will either kill you or keep you alive, right? The illnesses of diseases we face are due in part to what you put in your mouth or what you don't put in your mouth. So we're going to come back. We're going to talk about that. All right, Otto, was there something that, was there a point for you where you said, mm, let me let me pay attention to something differently or what happened or did something happen? Uh, yes, I've always been physically active, you know, so Physically, you know, as far as exercise, I've always kept myself pretty much fit. But I recognized that my diet was lacking, nutrition was lacking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I used to be one of those guys that all I needed was one vegetable with my dinner right. and a banana with my breakfast. And that was it. That was far as my fruits and vegetables went. Aha. Uh -huh. That's good. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so uh, at that, I was just thinking, I said, you know, I got to do better with my diet and just looking for ways to try to eat better, eat less junk mm -hmm. um, and snacks. And okay. so that's, that was the starting point for me because it was just a sense of diet not being right, basically. Not being right, okay. And you, you said, I got, a, I got a comment on that. You said, like most people, I eat vegetables. I eat the one that I like every day the one that I like, right? I don't eat the rest of them. I just eat the one that I like, the green beans or whatever it is. And then I eat a banana. I want to chime in on about a banana real quick because I have my nutrition hat on. I want to say this for those who are watching your blood sugar. Bananas are wonderful. I like bananas full of potassium. If you're watching your blood sugar, banana has a very high content. And so I've, I hear people with uh, diabetes or blood sugar challenges and what they'll have for breakfast is a banana. And that ain't going to get it. Or if you have a bowl of cereal with banana or fruit, that ain't gonna get it. Y'all can ask me about that later because this isn't about, I can't, I can't go into all that, but I just wanna put y'all on notice that way that fruit is amazing and healthy, but if you are trying to work on your blood sugar, that ain't how you wanna start off. 
I'm going to put that out there because I, I just I need y'all to hear that and come back to you, Otto, okay. and hear more about your story, because I also know and you'll tell us about this. There's some other things that that occurred, but we'll, I know you're going to tell us. Johnny, for you, was there was there a reason why you said, hmm, I better do something different? Well, yeah. for me, I, I remember being back in college and, you know, going through finals week and, you know, I had, you know, I, I was feeling okay. So I thought, but all of a sudden I had these, this pain. And, and so I asked anybody, Hey, you know, is there, y'all got any Tylenol and nobody said anything, but somebody said, Hey, I have some Advil. So I took it. And <laughs> before you know, I had blood everywhere and no pain and, and stuff like that too. And so, so ever since those early, those early years of college for years and years, I had this issue with, you know, this chronic inflammation going on in my intestinal tract. Um, and so they died. It, it took me years to even give me a, a proper diagnosis. Uh, they came up with one of the autoimmune diseases, but it was a constant flare up, a constant battle. So not really understanding what was going on. I would you know, start shying away from some things and okay, I'll cut out beef this time and whatever, but I still didn't really have a, a, a regimented diet or pattern diet. I just, you know, I just ate less of those things. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't have that true understanding. And that, that became the bottom line in terms of the education. So, but, but through that, you know, I started learning a little bit and said, so, okay, well, maybe I need to do better since they're saying it might be related to what I'm eating and stuff like that too. So I just cut out the one or two things. I was still on all the dairy. I was on everything else I wanted to eat because again, being somewhat athletic, like most of us and, and uh, active, you know, we just figured we'd just burn it off. We'd do those things and we're young. So we don't think about that. Oftentimes in our communities anyway, we like what we like. And so it's, you're not going to tell us we can't have certain things, uh, especially when we don't truly understand it, you know, and I think now uh, it's not so taboo to be healthier. So, you know, for me, I think that was the catalyst then uh, just trying to not be in pain because that, you know, that, that was significant. Not be in pain. And you're right. When you say, I've, I've heard of many a brother say, you ain't going to tell me, you know, what I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat because my daddy said, I like my sausage and I like my this, this, that, and the other. And give me my medication. Well, give me my sausage and then pass me my medication. All in the same breath. Yeah. All in the same breath. So that's, you know, we y'all come on now, right? All right, Edward, was there, was there, and I love your story because we talked a, a little bit. What, <laughs> did, what What's your inspiration behind saying, I'm going to pay attention to my health? Uh, let me first com commend my uh, colleagues for, you know, taking this opportunity to be able to speak the way speaking. Gentlemen, we are trailblazers, and trailblazers actually are not born, but they are made, and this is what we're doing today. We are change catalysts. I'm very, very new in the community, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have imagined that I'll be here speaking so passionately and I would actually give a shout out to my upliner, Phyllis, who's actually been able to, you know, give me so much uh, support in terms of really coming out to speak as passionately as I am. My aha moment is actually a combination of dots, so to speak, in my past that I'm now connecting, you know, I'll talk about, in fact, I'll share my story like, you know, it has happened to you, Rob, uh, Robin, about your dad having passed because of being, you know, so laissez-faire about social habits mm -hmm. and not really concerned about nutrition. We don't realize how this carelessness as men of color get so much involved in and so much entangled in it affects generations after because those habits keep spiraling over and over and over. This is the albatross that I'm trying to shake off my family. Dad passed away. I'm getting a little bit emotional, but that is it. Dad passed away because of BP. That was about 1988. And mom passed away seven years later. She also had health issues. She had a um, a cancer infection. So when I look back, I look at their social habits, nutritional habits, some of which I'm now realizing. And then fast forward, I'll also talk about the health, health scares that I've been through because of working and thinking, well, 
You can only eat this kind of food. This is the only food that can keep you going. I was working so passionately, you know, doing my business, not thinking about his exercises. I got caught up with DVT in 2015. Mm. And then I've also had this very, I would call it persistent problem of a constipation. Now, fast forward, having been in this community, I've had to kind of like, you know, cross the T's and dot the I's and realize that, hey, this is a wake-up moment for you. And I look into my family, we all have this blood pressure issue. That gene has actually really messed us up. So it's a wake-up call, and what I'm trying to do is sensitize us men out there that it's a good thing to come out and talk about health issues. I'll end right here, but probably speak more later on. Yeah. You had to take some notes. You mentioned a couple of things. We are a community, and our community, we, we have locked arms, joined together to help other people realize what's possible with their health. And I love it when you said social habits, because that's what they are. They really are social habits. And within this particular community, think about all of y'all that are listening, that when you are around a group of like-minded people, they're eating similar, they're flooding their bodies with things that are, are vital and gives them a vibrancy, then you do that when in Rome. But if you're sitting with folks that are, which I like hot chicken wings and pizza and all those things, when you're in a community like with, which that way, that's what you're going to eat. And so this community, we keep each other going. I mean, I have people texting me, did you drink your water today? Are you, you know, are you, we're, we're just, that's, that's who we are. And what you said, Edward, is what we do affects generations to come. What your parents do, did affects you. What my mom did, that's why I was pre-diabetic, all of that. So, you know, we, we have to, we don't have to take it serious, but it'll, it'll, it'll get us. Our social habits will, will, get, will get us. Now, the question is, okay, so now what do we do? Because if I'm, if I'm correct, folks want to know how can they change and stay the same at the same time? How can I eat everything that I'm eating and do everything that I'm doing and be healthy? And so that's not usually viable or something you can do. But what I, what I am going to introduce you to is a simple way to a step one for you all that are listening. A step one. So I'm not asking you to do a whole bunch of things. I'm asking you to do one simple thing. We all in this community, we eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, right? Not just one, not just two, but we flood our bodies with more than 30 raw vine ripened fruits and vegetables every day. Now, I'm not asking you to stop eating X, Y, Z. And now I, I would love to ask you to stop doing certain things, but right now I'm just going to say add more produce to your body. And we do it in a very specific way. We, we take our fruits and vegetables, which sounds crazy because when I heard about it, I was like, yeah, right. We take our fruits and vegetables in a capsule or a chewable and it's legit. It's all fruits and vegetables, the pits, the peel, the seeds, the water taken out. It's ground into a powder and we take that every day and I would say to you all that are listening imagine what would happen if you flooded your body with 30 raw rot, vine ripe and fruits and vegetables every day when you go to the store and you pick fruits and vegetables out of the store it's picked before it was ripe and it's sitting there with chemicals on it and all that stuff so the opposite is giving your body what it needs. When you do that, you're giving it at a cellular level and it's what, you, it's what your cells need to grow, thrive and repair. So my, my, I'm gonna give you some, we're gonna give you some more information about it. And we want you to be very open-minded about incorporating this into your daily. So I wanna go to Otto. And if you can share Otto, how you found out about these fruits and vegetables in a capsule and what was your life like before? Because there's something you did not tell us that, that I'm sure you will tell us. 
and what is your life like now? So you did you found these fruits and vegetables, you started taking them and, and what? What's your story? Okay, my story, while I was hitting and missing it with my diet, trying to eat better, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with early stage prostate cancer back in 2011. And during my recovery, my wife and I met this amazing couple who are, I believe, on online right now, uh, Beverly and Johnny uh, Grandison. They introduced us to the healthy living community mm -hmm. and the whole food nutrition in a capsule. So that's how my journey began after being diagnosed with early stage prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, I was dealing with high cholesterol and I was taking acid reflux medication mm -hmm. during that time. And so after being introduced to the whole food nutrition in the capsules, mm -hmm. I began taking it consistently. Initially I didn't, but consistently is key. I began to take them consistently. And uh, over time, uh, my cholesterol levels went down. And of course, of the diet change, I was able to come off my acid reflux medication. And again, during the process of time, I was also able to come off my high cholesterol medication. What you say, what you say, go ahead. <laughs> right. Okay. So, I mean, you know, that's exciting. My doctor was a little surprised because he wanted to keep me on medication. Yes, he but, did. But I didn't want to. I said, look, I'm going to, I'm going to work this. I don't believe I need any more medication. And so after, I guess after a while, he decided to leave me alone. You just say, keep on doing what you're doing. Yes. And so that was, I mean, that was a big thing for me, really. You know, the change of diet, uh, being able to come off the medication. I mean, that was big for me, really wow. big for me. You said consistency, because that's key. And you took fruits and vegetables, like you flooded your body with it. If I heard you correctly, you were dealing with prostate cancer, you had high cholesterol. I mean, you had some things going on yes. and you were on medication and now that's changed. No As y'all listen, go ahead. No longer. And also, no longer. this is another special thing that happened. I was dealing with seasonal colds mm -hmm. at the time. Without fail, it was either November, latter part of the year, or in January, the new part of the year, without fail, I'll catch cold. Mm -hmm. And they would linger, linger month, weeks and months at a time. And my wife would just try to find me everything over the counter to give me initially. Right. Yeah. <laughs> initially. initially. This, this was before the whole food nutrition uh -huh. uh, came, came mm -hmm. to play. So again, over time, I no longer start having seasonal colds. Uh, really, I haven't had a cold in over seven years. Wow. Not, not so much as sore throat, none that. of that. It's like, now that's a miracle to me. It, you know, it's, it's a good deal. I want to say this because I know we have some other, the other brothers that are going to speak. We're not making any claims. We're not saying that this is, you know, this is a cure. This is yes. this is food, y'all. Straight up legit food. Like this is the power of it. And how would you know unless you're doing it? That's why I said at the end, we're gonna say when you get off of this, you're gonna contact the person that invited you here and you're gonna get you some. And you're gonna take them consistently. Yes. And that's that's what that's that's the deal. So let let's let's talk to Johnny. And so Johnny, he had something good, because when we have something good, whether it's good for us or not, we'll tell our friends, right? If we got some good gin or some good whiskey or some good movie or whatever is good, we're going to tell somebody. So now we got something good that's healthy. He, he told you, and it's like, look what, he, look what he's doing. Look what he's 
how he's affecting your family, your generation. So Johnny, how did you get introduced to these plant powders and what was your life like before and then after? Uh, like I say, before, off and on, I was having these continued flare-ups because of the, the diagnosis. And, you know, we thought we were eating healthy. You know, we used to be the ones that, you know, every time we went to the grocery store, get the little Hershey's Kisses and a little miniature or whatever. And that was just part of the grocery store. what we did. But when my wife was actually diagnosed with autoimmune disease, that was one of those where it was like life altering. You know, we were sitting in the hospital and the medical staff pretty much said, hey, we want you to take, you know, look at these three drugs. One, she would give herself a shot every day, one a shot every other day, and it was a third drug she would have given herself a shot every month, but it hadn't gotten it approved yet. But before we left the hospital, they were like, it's only a 50-50 chance either of these drugs might work. So when we got home, my neighbors were like, okay, what did they say? And when we told them, they said, you know what? You can beat this, but it's in your diet. Get rid of all that white pasta, white sugar, white flour, white rice, anything white and processed, take out your diet and eat more fruits and vegetables. And so that's actually when they introduced us to the plant-based powders. And so even though, you know, we're, we're focusing on my wife's situation, I had been diagnosed, you know, too. So she was getting her energy back. I had just given some blood work. So when it was time for my follow-up, they would suggest I get a copy of my previous blood work. Now that's something I had never done. I figured if I went to the doctor, he didn't say nothing. I got home, he still didn't say nothing. I figured everything was good. But this time as I sat there looking at my previous blood work, I realized I had all these highs and lows all over the place. Cause you know, you got the little H's and L's. But after being on these plant-based products for about 45 days, all those highs were down in the range and all the lows were up in the range. You know, and as an engineer, I'm used to looking at graphs and charts all the time because they, they paint a picture for me. You know, they tell a story. And what it did for me was it identified something I already knew to be true, which was the chronic inflammation, but then it was correcting all those other little things I didn't even have a clue about. You know, we talk about these silent killers. So that was real time. You know, even since then, all my numbers are proved, not on any medications. And again, we don't make any claims, but that's just some stuff that has happened. And so we often talk about in our communities, things are hereditary, you know, you know, you know, you know this, this blood pressure runs in there, this cholesterol runs in my family, you know, you know, all this stuff is in my family. But what we tend to have found out over these last 15, 16 years is that we can take identical twins, same parents, same household, same environment, but they had two different lifestyles. And as such, they have two different results from it. So what we think more what was hereditary was the fact that Big Mama taught Grandma how to cook, Grandma taught Mama how to cook, Mama taught us how to cook, and now we're teaching the kids how to cook. So we think those habits are actually what was hereditary. And so we can make just one simple change, we can see we're making a big difference for not only us, but for those that are coming behind us. You know, and like I said, in our communities, we like what we like, but that one simple change can make a difference. One simple change. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Raphael, your story. What was your life like before? How did you get to these plant powders? Now, what what's your story? You got to unmute. Okay, go. Yeah. Um, before, I mean, like I said, I'm from LA, but I'm the only city boy in my family. Like my my parents are deeply rooted in the South. My mom's from West Point, Mississippi, and my mm -hmm. daddy's from um, Rosenberg, Texas. So talking about generational curses. Um, and all, all that growing up on like pig feed and collard greens, ham hocks, everything. I grew up on that. I mean, the first thing that I knew how to cook was fried chicken, right? So the coming up, like even in college and even as a young adult and becoming a new father, I kind of went away from that. So I'm thinking I'm good um, until I got those results, right? Back in 2019. And I'm just showing you the timeline. I'm still thinking I'm good. Um, it wasn't until I got those results and then, you know, my wife, you know, not that I'm scared of my wife, but I have a healthy respect for my wife. Um, she told me that, hey, I need to get on these plant powders um, even more consistently. You guys mentioned that I needed to get because I was taking them here and there, but consistently. Um, that's all I needed. I needed to see that and I needed to see that challenge. So it wasn't overnight for me. You know, everybody's genetics are different. Uh, mm -hmm. Mine is different. So it took about, it took a year. It was 2020, um, but it took a full year. Um, I saw my panels getting lower, had a good doctor that basically didn't believe in medication as well. So he let me work it out. Um, but I was very consistent on my plant powders. I cut off, cut out the carbs, um, pasta, everything. I, I became even more strict. Um, and I added even more um, vegetables. Um, 
So it was in 2020, I got my results back and hey, I'm all back in the positive zone, right? So I'm good, I'm good to go. Um, but now more so than ever, I kind of, I, I, I realized that I, I broke that curse that was kind of creeping up on me that my daddy had, my granddaddy had. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at inheritance to my kids, that was the biggest thing because you know they're not growing up the way that I grew up, drinking Kool-Aid, things of that nature. So it's so important for me, the passion aspect, to teach my kids um, the positives, not, not just the positives, but actually just changing the mentality. You know, Yeah, you don't have to be raised off like this because it was just a norm, normality for me. Yeah. So, you know, why, you know, my, my wife, you know, my better other half, she, she made sure that I was on it, you know, can't have, you got to have that support system. Um, but my passion really now is that inheritance of my kids. Cause now I'm giving them more, not just financial, but living longer and living healthier so they can pass that on to the next generation. So. And you said that so well, so well. All right. And then Edward, wow. you take these plant powders. What was your life like before? Right. What is your life like now? Right. For me, it's more to do with the constipation issues that I had, one. And two, talk about the shift, the shift in my nutrition. There has been something that I've just had to pivot, 360. And then say, hey, I just have to hunker down and improve my diet. Mm -hmm. I started taking the plant powders in September, uh, September last year, mm -hmm. and within a space of about four or five months, I could feel it that when I, you know, uh, visit the biggest or smallest room in the house, mm -hmm. you know, I could feel that I was really feeling comfortable. Okay. That was a huge plus. But then, Let's talk about nutrition. This is something that I've had to say. I'm going to have to work hard on this. In my society, in my community, we enjoy our fufu. We enjoy our, call it nishima, call it whatever you call it, the greasy food, you know, the, um, uh, everything else that goes with it, spicy food. Mm -hmm. The issue here is modulation, modulation. You can take these foods, but you have to, realize that there's a certain impact that these foods are going to have on your health. And much as I am on a changed uh, diet or nutrition, mm -hmm. I do take these foods very once in a while. I'll probably like say once in two weeks, I'll okay. take it, but in very, very, you know, modulated, you know, uh, uh, consumption rates. So basically one, the constipation is not there. And my nutritional habits have actually changed. Pretty, pretty, you know, uh, 360, so to speak. And then I just want to highlight one issue that I probably forgot to uh, throw in about uh -huh. my dad and mom having passed away. Mm -hmm. They died at the very early age of 55. 55. You can imagine, 55. And uh -huh. when I look back, this is something pretty serious because I've had to connect the dots and mm -hmm. really realize that nutrition is key to breaking this, you know, uh, uh, I'm calling the albatross, you know? Yes. So that's that for now. Thank you. Thank you so much. So our time, y'all, if we could talk for, I mean, good grief, this is an endless topic. Right before we go, I just want to have Johnny come back. Johnny also grows his produce. So we take our fruits and vegetables in a capsule and we actually grow our produce as well. Johnny, do you have your tower anywhere near? Uh, oh, you have to I, unmute. Yeah, I, I do. I'll probably ask Beverly if she's in the show. area where she can actually yeah, show. Yeah, can you show? I show sure me. will. I'm like always excited to show our babies. Okay. So, so yeah, show one. us. There That's we go. It. You're growing, so they're growing. Y'all, we're not playing about getting this produce in our bodies. They're growing it right inside. What are you growing, Bev? So this is a flex, and this is the bigger one, 20 gallon reservoir. And I mean, look at this fresh lettuce, y'all. I mean, you can't beat this fresh lettuce, right? The lights aren't on right now. So if you turn the lights on, that's the, that's how it looks because there's LED lights. 
And so we've got chives, I mean, all kinds of lettuces. And then the small one, the, the, we call it the home, is wow. the one that is a 13 gallon reservoir. And again, turn that light on because it's on a timer. And the, there's a pump that pushes the water up and waters the roots. I mean, look at this. I mean, you guys cannot beat this. This is from tower to table. Look at this rich chard, our kale. I put those in our smoothies every day. There's our more lettuces, romaine. Oh my goodness, y'all. Like, these are seriously our babies. I wish I could go out on the deck and show y'all the rest. But yeah, that's our- How many do our... you have? How many do you All have? Right. Look at Robin. There's like, there's like six up outside right now. I have oh, a wow. full strawberry one. But that's because we, we, we weren't traveling with them anymore. So wow. we just said, wait, why don't we just grow food in them? That's, that's amazing. Yeah, we're taking control of our food source. I'm telling y'all, this is like, everybody yeah. should have one. It's like refrigerators. Yeah. And so many of the, we just had uh, Johnny and Beverly show theirs, but we, there's so many of us within the community that we grow our produce. So this is the produce that, you know, you can go out and have a salad. It grows faster. It's cleaner. You know, what's on your food. And we also take our fruits and vegetables in a capsule. So my action call to action for you all, for the, for the black men on the call, for those that love them, share this information with them, have them contact the person that invited them here and figure out how you can start getting those fruits and vegetables in your body consistently so that you too, the next time we do black men in nutrition, we could have you a part of the Google community and the panel sharing your story. So I'm going to officially stop the recording, but we always do what we call the after party. So 